I want you to come on a little journey with me. We moved to Thailand several years ago and almost immediately I started working with an organization offering services and support to asylum, uh, asylum seeker and refugee minors. It was a new initiative so there were lots of nuts and bolts to figure out and a backlog of nearly 100 children and teenagers who needed support. I was most definitely in over my head and in those beginning months there were many moments that made me feel teary, overwhelmed, emotional, and hopeless. <clears throat> On our very first big meeting day, we asked everyone to gather all together. We hoped to play some games, offer a much needed workshop, and attempt to foster community somehow. Uh, I still remember the girls all crowded together in one side of the room in their brightly colored dresses, gossiping and giggling, and the boys slowly coming in, slouching in the corner on the other side of the room. None of us, myself included, knew quite what to expect. And on that first day, a thin, smiley young man stood up and began singing his country's national anthem. I tried to remember how it came about, but there's only this most beautiful moment, and beautiful and sacred moment, etched into my poetic memory. I'll forever recall us all standing around the room, a large circle, him in the front leading us, the voices around me joining in. I still get goosebumps to think about it. That then was the moment that solidified our program. That is the moment which we had wanted so badly to somehow create or facilitate, um, but it couldn't be forced. The kids were unified, were a part of something. They had found a space where they could be, be proud, be safe, be hope-filled, be Somali, just be. And that in itself, for them, was something invaluable. And that, for me, became the moment I saw what our work could do, what it needed to do. It became a moment that I thought back to from time to time for inspiration and motivation. And that was the first time I remember meeting Zachariah. In this line of work, you aren't really supposed to have favorites, and I always say, oh, so-and-so is a favorite, or this person I really love. But the honest truth is, I loved all my clients, and they were all my favorites for reasons as diverse as they are. One client was known for long, eloquent speeches, which used to make me roll my eyes and look at my watch, but over time I came to expect her soliloquies and would be sad if they weren't present. One client never smiled, no, never a smile at me, but behind his sour face is the sweetest soul. So when I caught a glimpse of his smile every 100 days or so, it made all of our surly exchanges worth it. And so on and so on. I have a story for every kid. Perhaps one day I'll tell it. But Zacharia, Zaki, he was a favorite from the first moment he stood and bravely sang. He wasn't assigned to be my client, but he continued to impress me over the months at our group meetings. Always smiling, pleasant, friendly, the first to offer help to me and my coworkers and his peers, quick to serve others, cleaning up trash, setting up tables, the last to take a meal, participatory in discussion, an active listener. These behaviors were not customary to all of, for all of his peers, so these actions made him stand out immediately. I credit the success of many of our early group gatherings to Zacharia. He's a leader. His willingness to engage and honestly discuss different issues allowed our program to succeed and encouraged his peers to participate as well. Over the next few days, I'm going to tell you a little more about Zacharia's story. It's hard to know how much to tell you. I want all of you to see what I see when I look at him, but I also need to respect his story and his privacy. The bottom line is this. I'm on a mission to get this amazing kid, well, young man now, to freedom. Yes, that's right, to freedom. A place where he can work, move about freely, go to school, live without fear, a place where he can have a future. Because the reality is, right now, he's not free. Because of the laws in this country, Zachariah has none of these liberties, and every day risks the possibility of indefinite arrest and detention. Zachariah has the opportunity to be sponsored and resettled in Canada, but we need to raise money to cover his sponsorship fees. You can read all the details below regarding the sponsorship process, the amount and purpose of the money, etc. Please consider donating to help our friend have a chance at life and a promising future.